Now this show, it's a it's a kid show, right? But it has a lot of adult themes. Now, Melanie, you have a lot of those, a lot of those episodes of Paul Brown Chili, a baby race is a, a, a big one. What? When you're thinking you're just going into the studio to, to record, and then you watch the finished product, you're like, what, that's not what I envisioned at all for this children's cartoon. I think the biggest one for me was watching Sleepy Time for the first time. Aww. I recorded it. I knew it was going to happen. At the end, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we get an element of it. We get the, the script and... But occasionally I will read the scripts beforehand and both cry and laugh. Baby Race, I definitely cried before I recorded it. So I knew that was a tear jacker, everybody. And Granddad. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes it takes me by surprise too. Yeah, but what about yourself? Do you, so do you, do you two actively watch the show? Or do, is it a set it and for, you know, set it and forget it and work on your next It's project? a little bit set and forget, but then we'll watch the very finished product. But that granddad episode that you were talking about now, that is just so beautiful. Like, it, it's, it, it's that shot at the end where you're sitting and time's passing. It's just so simple and so, so emotional. And it's, it's the beauty of the show. It's simple. But, and it gets the feeling across without overcooking it, if you know what I mean. It's just, it's just the basic instinct of it. It's very good. So, and, and David, you're the, actually, I'll, I'll let you go ahead. I, I, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. What was the question? Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, I usually end up, I have two nieces who are two and four. So that's usually when I do the watch when it happens. And, um, but occasionally there was a couple of episodes where I've really had fun in the booth. Joe Brum, who's the creator, he pretty much writes every episode. He directs the animation, he directs us. He's a genius. He's the reason we're all here. Um, he sent me a couple. Yeah! Yes. Um, I remember he sent me Ham Hamadan early. I want to talk to you about how you got the job in the first place. Uh, Dave, this wasn't something that you thought was going to be a full-time job, right? No, nah, I didn't even know this job existed. So I was just, I, I'm, I'm from a music background, like bands and stuff, and I was talking to somebody who knew someone who was getting in a lift, and they were like, hey, they're doing an animated show about a dog, and do you want to be one of the characters, the dad? And I was like, I can't do it. I don't, I don't know how to act. And they said, forget about it. You can read, you just go in the booth, and say a couple of lines. And so we went in, and I, I read a couple, and then we ended up, you know, they gave me some feedback, like, you know, try not to make too much of a bleed of yourself, try and do it a bit better. And so we did that, and then I thought, that's it. I'll look for it on YouTube as some sort of scratchy animation show about a dog. Uh, and then, then they sent me the pilot, and then Mel's voice was on there and everything, and I thought, wow, this is actually pretty good. And they rang up and they said, can you do some more? I said, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and that's it. So I, I, don't, I don't really know how to act, but I have had the advantage of having two daughters. So a lot of the stuff in the show I can relate to as a parent of two daughters. So uh, that's my contribution to the Acting 101 today. Thank you. <laughs> and see. So my journey was a little different. I was already doing a lot of commercial voiceovers and I was putting down a voiceover in the studio of a Dan Rum who plays Stripe. And he said, you've got a great voice. My brother's making this animation. Um, it's already cast, but you want to chuck some demos down um, if there's future characters. And the 11th hour before it premiered at the Asia Pacific Cartoon Convention, um, they wanted to change up the voices because the mum had an English voice in, in the scratch track. And they said, can we just let your voice in for the premiere? And I'd only seen very basic, like four frames a second with the kids' voices in, I fell in love. I was like, anything, take anything you want. <laughs> um, and then after that, they did their due diligence. They auditioned for three months, and then they came back to me and said, you were right all along. <laughs> and then the producers told me that 
that um, they couldn't find the same warmth in anyone else's voice. Oh. That's why I got it. So before we, uh, we're going to get to some audience questions, so we do have a microphone right over there, so uh, if, you, if you do have some questions, feel free to start lining up. Uh, before, <laughs> careful, careful, no injuries. So I want you two to know that, uh, I, I know you've got a chance to meet Ben, the, the owner and promoter of Twin Cities Con, but have you any understanding of how many of the celebrities that are here at Twin Cities Con are here, book themselves because they wanted to meet you. No way! I didn't know that. No way! I didn't know that at all. Oh, oh that's great! Right. That's very right. cool, guys. That's so nice. There, uh, we we announced you. We announced Bandit on Father's Day, yep. and uh, Ben said his phone would not stop ringing. Uh, it was it was amazing. So, uh, on behalf of everybody here at Twin Cities, at Twin Cities Con. Uh, in Minneapolis. I want to say again, welcome here uh, to Twin Cities. Thank you. Uh, and we want to thank you. We want to thank you for coming here. Good on you. It's been such a joy to be here. All right. Hello. What's your name? My name is Liliana Strat, and I'd like to know what is both of your guys' favorite episode and why. Favorite episode. Okay, guys. My favorite is Sleepy Time. Uh, I think sonically it's so beautiful with the, the planet uh, Gust of Holt. And um, I think the storyline, which really is all that unseen labor that parents do to make sure their kids feel safe and loved at night, is so special and it's done so beautifully. So that's why it's my favorite. I really like the, the granddad episode, like I said before, because I think it does so much with so little. But I also like any episode that has unicorns in it. Because that's so much fun to do, so. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thanks, William. Thank you so much. Hello, what's your name? My name is Alice. Hi, Alice. Hey, Alice. And what is your favorite kind of food? Ooh. Well, yesterday for breakfast, I had um, like fried chicken on a waffle with maple syrup and like this sort of buttery, creamy stuff on the side, and then this sort of gravy thing in a little tub. That is my new favorite. <laughs> I don't know what you call it, but it's delicious. It's called chicken waffle. What is it? Chicken and waffle. Chicken waffle. Let's do that. I love it. I love anything. That I can have lots of little plates of different things and eat with my hands. That's my favorite. I just want to try a tiny bit of everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, my name is Lucy, and I have autism. And I was just wondering, uh, does Bingo have autism? Because sometimes I can relate with, with what she's saying. He's like that. I don't know if she's particularly written that way. But Joe is really who makes the show. He's very clever at making characters that lots of people can relate to in lots of different ways. So Joe is, as a person, guys, very kind and very inclusive. And I think you see that through all of his characters. Band don't want to be here. I have a chili with me, and we would like to know if this is a kids' show that adults enjoy, or if this is a parenting show that kids enjoy. I think it's a human show that humans can enjoy. Thank you. Hello. It's gonna be a lot of that for this. Um. Hi, my name is Hope. Uh, I introduced my parents to the show, and now my dad has become a bigger fan of Libby than I am. <laughs> Love that. I didn't play it that way, it just happened. Um, my question is, what has been your favorite special guest on Libby? 
See, I don't, I don't even know who the special guest is. <laughs> um, probably Lin Manuel Miranda. <laughs> he is also a genius, and I love that he recognizes the show and Joe's work for the beautiful creation it is. So yeah, that was that was a moment for me. Thank you. Who else has been on it? Um, Natalie Portman. Yeah, she's good. Uh, <laughs> she's great. Rose Byrne played my sister. Great. Right. Actually, all our special guests have been pretty incredible. We're very lucky. Um, hi, I'm Katie, and I'm wondering what's your least favorite episode? Oh! Are you trying to start a war here? I can't think of one that's a real pain. Do you, do you have a least favourite? No. no. <laughs> Maybe. No. You don't have a least favourite? Well, neither do we. No. I think they're all good. Good question, though. Hello. Hello, my name is Lily. I was wondering, like, are there any lines that made you, like, really laugh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, most of like, when, when we're doing it, like you're reading it, and most of the time is laughter. Because Joe, the creator, Joe, it sounds so like powerful, doesn't it? Joe, the creator. Um, like you, there's a bit of improvising going on, and you just try and do stuff, and he makes me laugh, and, and sometimes he heals of what, what I do. So there's no particular line. I do like, I don't want to take advice from a cartoon dog. I think that's pretty funny. That's That's pretty meta. I like it. Yeah, I know, it's a bit of a loop. But it's a catchy dog, isn't it? Uh, mine probably that uh, we actually did a few different variations of this one that didn't have a bar when I say, This is what happens when you're not happy with what you got. Someone's husband eventually gets it. <laughs> we also had someone's husband eventually dies. Um, <laughs> that didn't make it. Uh, there was a few other, other variations on that, so lo lots of fun with that one. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello. Let's give it up for our volunteer over there working the yeah. line. Yeah. Hello. Hello. So if you had to send the Booty family on a trip, where would you send them? Ooh, good question. If you had to send the Healer family on a trip. Well, they travel a little bit. Their dad travels a lot, doesn't he? He's always off doing whatever it is that he does. I would say somewhere that's different from Brisbane, Australia, where they live. So Brisbane's quite warm and humid. So I would say somewhere that's cold and dry, and maybe somewhere that gets snow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Maybe. That's where we're going to send them. So we're going to send them. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's good, Mike. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Hello. Hi, I'm Kellyanne. And um, one of my favorite episodes is called Bike, and which a lot of the different characters get very frustrated in themselves. And the main advice is to have a good cry dust yourself off and try again. Um, as adults, we often don't get this opportunity. Um, do you think that we should? Like, yes. <laughs> to have, you know, a little cry when you get frustrated. Bluey lessons are for everyone. <laughs> Trust me, after this, I will be sobbing uncontrollably backstage. <laughs> Mel uh, will be like, it's okay, pick yourself up. Next time the comedy eats better. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, I'm Luna. Hi, I'm Luna. I just wanted to know, if you had to pick another character besides Bandit and Chili, who would it be? As in, to play or that we love? Just, just that you like, yeah. Like in any show or yeah. the movie? Okay, oh, so my favorites equal tie are my children, Bluey and Bingo. Oh. And, and that's not just because they're kids. They're
They're my kids. I, I think they are so brilliant. I'll be Homer Simpson. <laughs>
was wondering if like all the songs you've made, like between the high kicks and the Polaroids and your little movies album and all the custom albums, which song would you choose to use for it? Oh wow, that's a that's a great, great question. question. Um, I would just choose whatever the most popular one is, and then everyone else can enjoy that. So um, I don't know. Why don't we just say couples fight? Because then if, it could reflect if, if um, Chili and Bandit were having a fight. That's a good question. But they don't have a fight. They're just watching someone else fight. <laughs> God, I almost got in trouble there. <laughs> someone else. Good question. Real good question. Hello. Hi, my name's Kylander. I'm here with my mom in the audience. Oh. Hey, mom. Hey, mom. Hold on, real quick. How many of you went from saying mom to mom? mom. <laughs> 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 um, I was wondering, out of all of the lessons shown in Bluey, which, which lesson do you think is super important for the kids to learn? This is really a really good question. Um, there's so many important lessons, but one part of the show that I really love is that the parents are fallible. So they make mistakes and they say sorry and they own them. And I think for everyone, not just parents, that's such good modeling for us all to see because we're all very human slash canine. And, uh, <laughs> we, we, we all make mistakes and we can all own them and apologize. I I agree with everything that Mel just said. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. What's your favorite sweet? My favorite sweet? Oh. Uh, I like caramel and tomatoes. I don't know if you have them over here. They're, I was gonna say the same thing. Oh my god, they're oh, little they're caramel. So insane. They're little chocolate koalas filled with caramel. Oh my god. Them here. They're incredible. They're really good. I want to have some Kit Kats. Do you have Kit Kats over here? Yeah, yeah. Kit Kat from the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 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 Thank you so much. Good question. Hello. Um, I'm Louise, and I have two questions at Cafe. Um, so the first one is like, do you ever like catch yourself improvising like a script, or do you like do you like specifically follow a script, or do you like sometimes improvise too? There's a fair bit of improvisation that goes on. Like Joe, Joe will have it, and it's always written so well, and you'll read it. But then, do you find now sometimes on the spot it just comes up with? Try say this, or try yeah. and, you know, do, do your weird voice. Yeah, be like, have a play here, throw some lines in there. Yeah, so there's lots of making stuff up. So, yeah, that's one of the many fantastic things about doing the show. You can just laugh with someone for a couple of hours while you're recording. Yeah. Um, and then the second one is, like, uh, do you have like catchphrases in the show? Do you ever like also catch yourself using those like in real life when you're talking? Yeah, I'm always going, it's dead! <laughs> <laughs> I think you stole that from me anyway. Um, probably not mine, but there is a... In the episode Escape, have you all seen Escape? There's a moment where they're talking about the dream car. And, uh... <laughs> Bingo says to Bluey, Bluey, the dream car. She's holding your seatbelt and she goes, well, I say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the dream car is one of my favorite episodes. Ah, uh, so escape my favorite. Cool. So good. Hello, my name is Carson. Hey, Carson. My question is, um, do you think there will ever be a live action Bluey? <laughs> well, is it that, like, Bluey's big play? Is that live action? <laughs> I think that's his live action on stage, but maybe, I don't know about screen, but Bluey's big play is probably as close as we're getting that. But do you mean like humans, like... It would be like, it would be like you guys, I was like, on the TV, just like you, you guys. That'd be incredible. <laughs> I would love that. I, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> Joe, you have notes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hello. Yo. Yo. I'm Alex. Hey, Alex. And I was wondering, like, what would you say 
took the longest or was the hardest episode to record? Ooh. Um, there's one, I don't know what it's called, but where the dad bands into in the French, he's, he's the chef. <laughs> and he's oh, yeah. 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 Pavlova. And I cannot speak French at all. And I think Joe can. Joe, you can speak it. So he had like fairly basic like lines written down. And it was just so hard for me to try and do it phonetically. You know, and he'd be like, you know, what a good, bad, a good, bad. And I'd get one of it, and he'd be like, no, just the second one, a good, bad. And it's just like, it just took hours. You know how we were talking about breaking down in tears before? That was me in the booth. So we, uh, we have about, we have a little bit over 10 minutes left, so we're gonna try to. Okay, okay we're gonna race through it. As many as possible. Yes. yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey. Have you ever like met like a fan outside of the con? Yeah. There's uh there's one or two bluey fans around. <laughs> the weirdest place I met one was in Italy. Uh, they they watch it there as well. It's everywhere. I, I met a fan in the shops. <laughs> also cool. My question is, what is your favorite moment? Favorite moments in the show? There's so many that I love. Um, I'm going to list uh, one. I'm just going to say one of the ones I love, which is when Coco's mum turns to Chili and says, you're doing a great job. Are you That's a beautiful one. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lydia. Hello. Hi. <laughs> What's your name? My name's Maynard. Hey, Maynard. Hey, Maynard. I have a question. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Ooh. Salted caramel. That's good. I, I like um, I like two. Chocolate and vanilla. <laughs> All the vanilla fans out there! Yeah. Yeah. Give me some chocolate! Um, hi, my name is Layla, and my question is if all the healer family, including like aunts, uncles, and cousins, were in a horror movie, who would be the first, who would be the first to get caught? <laughs> She's got everything, but she is the one who would sacrifice herself to protect her baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good question. Hello. Man. Thank you. I'm Tom. Thank you guys for uh, First one, um, thank you so much for making this show or uh, doing this show. I love that it's so unapologetically Australian. It's so much fun to watch. Yeah. Um, Two-parter. One, I know that Bandit has a commercial in Australia where he's kind of promoting a furniture uh, store where he's in like... Yeah, like, is, it, is it the mattress shop? Yeah, yeah, it's like, it kind of goes with the flat pack kind of episode. Yeah, a little yeah. bit, yeah. yeah. So uh, I guess my question to both of you is how do you feel that these roles have kind of opened up doors to you professionally? Well, for me, I had no profession beforehand, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I love doing some TV commercials. It's, it's great fun, but, um, no, it's been... Uh, look, there's, there's a lot of love for this show, so a lot of people will be like, oh, yeah, I, I want to meet that person. And I'm NT8, so there's a couple of things that, um, I think Louie has opened up we're moving into. Uh, so yeah, it's good thing. So we should keep our eyes and ears open. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Hi there, my name's Abby, and um, I know you've heard a lot about from parents and kids, but I just want to say from a teacher's point of view, how much this show has helped a lot of us keep positivity and explain things to kids that might be harder to understand. You have no idea how many times I tell my kids to do a big girl bark. Or how many times Dan's motor keep yuppie has saved my sanity for the day. So just thank you guys. And I'm so thankful you guys are a part of my kids' lives, not only mine, but my parents' lives. You just sent it to me. 
but also thanks to you being a teacher. <laughs> like being a teacher. Yeah. Great. Okay, and my question, just because it's always my kind of question, if you like pie, what is your favorite? Pie. Okay, so in Australia, that's why I was asking. meat pies. Okay. That face, hilarious. Um, <laughs> meat pies are good. I just have the plain beef meat pie. Meat pies, my pie. pies work. Uh, but I also have uh, been in America enough to have had uh, sweet pies, so um, I have enjoyed a lemon key. Oh yeah, key lime. Yeah. Key lime. Key lime. Key lime. Not quite the same. But key lime is what I have. Right. <laughs> right, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, I'm Seth. Um, first, I want to say my favorite episode is Rain. Um, I actually learned boldly in the pretend on the guitar after that. They love it. Um, what I wanted to ask. Is this something I've thought about? Do you ever get confusion from, I guess, foreigners, not from Australia, for just how Australian blue is? Because I could not explain what a dummy was or a veranda. And when Muffin said, look at my thongs, I was like, what? I had to I was like, what? Then I had to remember that I learned a long time ago that that is flip flops. First of all, we don't, we don't say dummy. No. <laughs> Queen of us. Look, I think Blue is educational in that way. It's like, it's, it's teaching people about the words for stuff. <laughs> Teach the kids the slang. Yeah. For the, you know, the thongs and the dunny and the... <laughs> so are, are you aware how it has influenced the rest of uh, the world? Not really, because it's just what we normally say anyway, right? Like, I'm going to put the thongs on and go after the dunny. Is that no problem? <laughs> I've had a lot of uh, parents in America tell me uh, that their kids are developing little Australian accents for yeah. the show. They're like, finally! For years in Australia, it's just been American TV and American accents. So, I'm getting one back, you guys. Thank you, Thank you so much. Hello. Hello. Hi, my name is Jack. Hi, Jack. And what's your Favorite movie? Ooh, favorite movie. That's a good question. Can we have a minute to think about that, Jack? Um, okay, a couple of my favorites, just off the top of my head. I love As Lamont's Romeo and Juliet. And uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Uh, okay, I'm just going to say the, la the last film I saw, which was Taylor Swift Ears. <laughs> Yeah, I like, I like um, blue and brown. 
<laughs> today. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, so we only have a couple questions left. Hello. Hi. Hey, good um, to see you again. Good seeing you. Hi, Andrew. Um, I only have one question, so I have to know, what is your guys' favorite dog? Favorite, favorite kind of dog. dog? Favorite kind of dog? Do we have to say that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. It's okay though. I like Labradors. Labradors are good. Big dog, big poo though. Yeah. <laughs> so you might want a smaller dog, like a Jack Russell. Smaller poo <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, I've never had a dog, so I don't know exactly what my favourite breed is, but red healers are gorgeous dogs. Yeah. Yeah. They're gorgeous and sweet and smart, so I'm going with the red healer. Thank you so much, lots of love. <laughs> lots of love to you lots as well. Lots of love back to you. Hello. I was wondering if you guys have like a specific line that really stuck with you. From the show or one that like you hold a really special place in your heart. We've all gone silent. We've heard a lot. Um, what's your favorite band and healer line? Oh, I don't know. There's too many new ones. Can you just think of one? <laughs> <laughs> can you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Who's got a favorite band and healer line? Oh, biscuits. Oh, biscuits. That's it. That's the one. Yeah. Magic Claw has no children. I love the persona wonderful lines, but since it's my favorite episode, uh, when Chili is the sun in the dream, and she says, oh my God, this is actually my too emotional just saying it, that I will always be there for you, even if you can't see me. Unfortunately, I, I could be here all day, and I know everybody here could be here all day, but unfortunately that is our time. Is, are there any last words that you would like to say to our great fans here? Thank you so much for coming, and thanks for enjoying the show, and um, letting us know how much it means to you all. It means so much to us as well, so thanks. Yeah, it's been so wonderful having you all. Uh, yeah, letting us know how the show's affected you and how you get through pandemics and just brought some joy into your life. That means so much to us. Thank you all. Thank you all.